I think it's been a little more believable than some of the YouTube clips that I've seen of other people. I need to lay this to rest one way or the other. Like I said, it's been four years. I'm kind of in a dilemma. You know, if I was early on in the relationship and I didn't think it was real, I would have broken it off. But the longer you're in it, less likely you are to break it off because what if it worked out? What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. There's been gifts, too. I've sent her, I've sent her probably six boxes of, of nice stuff that she's wanted, you know, that I've, I've uh, bought and sent her that she can't get over there. It's been getting shelled really hard. Her, uh, she showed me a picture of her uh, apartment, and I believe I saw the same or similar apartment with big holes in it. On today's episode, we speak to a man named Martin who has fallen deeply in love with a woman online who claims her name is Diana. The two met on the dating site Ukraine Date and spend their days messaging each other through text message. Martin's friends and family have put doubt in his mind about this woman not being who she claims to be and he's reached out to us to verify her true identity after sending $30,000 to help Diana out after her apartment was bombed in Ukraine. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hi guys, my name is Martin and I am a engineer with My hobbies are Netflix, motorcycle riding. I have a couple cats I really enjoy. Come here. Come here. Yeah, she uh, she's our, our favorite cat now. And I just am uh, a guy looking for a relationship with a beautiful woman. I've been married a couple times, divorced. I have two boys. The first one was was not even really a marriage it was more of a brother sister relationship my second marriage very beautiful lady but i again probably wasn't as attracted to her as i needed to be that has lasted 18 years and then we got divorced after martin's second divorce he decided to give online dating a shot he created a profile on Ukraine Date and was contacted by many women, but there was one woman's dating profile that just stood out to him. Her name is Diana. I, I saw her on Ukraine Date and I started talking to her. We, we talked on that platform for a while. She always told me that I was handsome, distinguished. I always told her that she was beautiful and gorgeous. She's Ukrainian. She speaks Russian. She has done some face modeling. She li likes iPhones. You know, Apple uh, pads more than anything. We both uh, like to dream. I dream about being her king. She dreams about being my queen. Uh, I used to uh, tell her bedtime stories, starting with Once Upon a Time, and I was always the poor peasant. She was always the, you know, the princess that needed to be saved out of a tower, that kind of stuff. I send her a lot of selfies. She sends me more. They were very exciting for me, but I, I would much rather see her face. You know, she's, she's a beautiful woman. You know, she says, what are you doing? And I just send her pictures of what I'm making or, you know, what I'm making for dinner or breakfast. I say, I want to make this someday. You know, stuff like that. We share pictures uh, about everything. I've always wanted to cook for her. 
Um, I sent her pictures of food. I sent her pictures of my motorcycle. Martin spent every day checking in on Diana. He was just waiting on a woman like her to shower with love. The guy was determined to make this relationship work. She is learning English. I sent her Babel link over there. She's learning English. I'm learning Russian. What I do too is I use I use uh, Google Translator. Um, sometimes because it's easier for her to understand Russian than English. Um, so uh, I'm just I'm helping her with that. She has friends. I pay for them to go out dancing. I, I sent them money to go on a lake cruise one time. Uh, very excited. She sent me videos of them dancing around. And I've gotten to talk to her other girlfriends. I've talked to her brother. She's been in uh, beautician school. She was uh, in electronics for a while. She likes nice things. She loves Godiva chocolates. Tezo tea. Passion tea. I've sent her many boxes of that stuff. I know what she likes. I, I know what she enjoys. Um, and she looks forward to talking to me. There's been gifts too. I've sent her I've sent her probably six boxes of of nice stuff that she's wanted, you know, that I've I've uh, bought and sent her that she can't get over there. I sent her her lawyer a couple bottles of Jack Daniels he was very excited about. She's had uh menstrual periods that have been strange and I've sent her to a gynecologist a couple of times. She's gotten help that way. Uh, very thankful, always very thankful. Martin would send gifts to Diana all the time. He wanted to make sure she knew how he felt about her. She's 30. I'm twice her age. I know that's something that a lot of people think is wrong. I know what it takes to uh, satisfy a woman emotionally is the first thing you need to be a good listener i think that's very important um in a relationship especially with a woman they thrive on uh, emotions uh, sensitivity uh, thoughtfulness compassion you know patience things like that where guys are just like kill 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 how many did i bang this week kind of stuff you know and i i'm not like that they're more attracted to that than they are a good-looking guy a lot of times because they're worn out with good-looking guys that are stupid and rude and, you know, abusive and condescending. And I hear that a lot from younger women, not just online, but I mean in general. Sunset picnic on the beach would be, I think, more romantic, more thoughtful, more genuine. It would mean more, you know, it would mean more to me to see her enjoy it. That's the kind of stuff I'd rather do than, you know, just swoop her up and make love to her. During the first year that we were together, she was working at retail. Her boss wanted to take her to Dubai. And I said, you know what he's going to want to do? And, and I said, well, it's up to you, but please don't do it. And she said, I won't do it. It would be difficult to start a family at my age. It, it wouldn't be the best, you know. Uh, probably wouldn't see my boys or girls get through high school. On February 24th, 2022, Russia invaded parts of Ukraine. It turns out Diana's apartment was bombed. This is when things went completely haywire. She needed to get out of Ukraine ASAP, and Martin was her only hope. She comes from Kharkov, which is the second largest city in Ukraine. She just dreams about coming to the United States, especially after the war. After a while, after a couple of years, I was just asking her, how can I help? Do you, need, do you need anything? Tell me if you need anything. It was $1,200 for her to leave Kharkov. Uh, she says that was what she needed to be able to get in a car. She said that the, the border guards were extorting people. She said the gas prices were crazy. You know, food was crazy. Everybody was fighting. She was very thankful. I got her out of that city. It's getting shelled really hard. Her uh, 
she showed me a picture of her uh, apartment and I believe I saw the same or similar apartment with big holes in it. You know, I just felt like I did the right thing. It was uh, traumatic that we had a appointment for her to go to the U.S. Embassy in Kiev with her lawyer. It didn't happen. Uh, we got really close. Up until this point, Martin was pulling money out of his savings account to send to Diana to get her out of Ukraine. She fled and moved to Poland with her family, but she claimed she had no money and all of her belongings were left in Ukraine. It was up to Martin to pay for all of Diana's living expenses until she got back on her feet. Her, her mother needed an operation. Uh, that was like $1,000. Um, rent was 400 and living expenses came to about five or 600 a month. Um, there's been doctor's visits. There's been a dentist. It says she says she fell on the ice uh, going out to buy internet and then had to spend that money that I sent her for that on a doctor's visit. But I kind of know how long it's been. I'll send her a little here and there. I think it's been a little more believable than some of the YouTube clips that I've seen of other people. Uh, but she did have requests a couple times that were not very cheap. You know, five hundred dollars here, two hundred fifty, three fifty. You know, it's added up. It's been probably thirty thousand dollars over four years. That's a lot of money. Um, I've gotten receipts. She sent me receipts from doctors and lawyers, a gynecologist I sent her to a couple times. I have not been able to make enough income to maintain my own place. I actually had to move uh, back to San Diego with my ex-wife, sleep on the patio. Uh, it's just not very pleasant, but it's better than sleeping in my truck. So I'm working on, you know, getting enough money together to move out. Basically, this is my room, <laughs> the living room. Um, and that's why I don't tell people about this, because I know they would laugh me to death. So, I mean, it's probably going to happen now that I'm on YouTube, but um, that's a chance I'm taking. Martin has sent so much money to Diana, he is now left with nothing. Yet he still holds on to meeting Diana in person and starting a new life with her. I have been in denial sometimes about my own abilities, um, my own income, you know, uh, especially now living at my ex-wife's house, that would not work. <laughs> I'm kind of in a dilemma, you know, if I was early on in the relationship and I didn't think it was real, I would have broken it off. But the longer you're in it, less likely you are to break it off because what if it worked out? That's why we keep investing more time, more money. And if we break it off, we never will see if it could have worked out. The ex did all this. <laughs> so uh, she's a lot better with her money than I am. I've made a lot of bad decisions, a lot of them are because of my relationship with uh, women that I've never met. Even talking to somebody on these sex sites can be crazy expensive, you know? And you're not talking to somebody like that. You're talking to some morbidly obese, bald lady with no teeth, no legs, in a wheelchair, on oxygen, on death row. That's who you're talking to. That's why I've, I've gone back several times and started the relationship over. Or she's reached out and I've answered her. Right now it's midnight, it's 12.30, she's texting me. <laughs> so, she gets better. She's using her, her uh, cousin's hotspot right now. She doesn't have any money for internet. There's just beauty. I mean, there's, I don't think there's any pity other than she's poor, you know? But I mean, it's more of a, a relationship that I would like to have. Instead of trying to save somebody, I think she would be saving me. I'd be relieved that she could finally have a life that she has always wanted here. I'd be relieved that I could finally have 
you know, someone that was very thankful to be with me, that would be very exciting. It's been enough for me um, to keep going. Here she is again. She's trying to say hi. <laughs> it's funny. If you were to tell me that Diana Morskina was real, I'd be elated. I'd be very excited. I'd be, you know, relieved that all the money and time that I invested into this relationship uh, would be panning out for both of us. I need to lay this to rest one way or the other. Like I said, it's been four years and I've invested a lot of emotional uh, energy in this. I just, I just believe it's real. I believe it's real. I guess I'd be really disappointed if I find out it's not, but I won't be angry because I can't, you know, take back the memories. They've been good. You know, working with you guys, I'm hoping that this will be the end one way or the other. You know, either I'll have a reason to break it off completely or I'll be able to, you know, be very hopeful. It's going to go either way. I'm ready for it to go either way. I really am. A few days later, our team sat down to look into all of Martin's information he sent over. So there was a, you know, the war in Ukraine. She's in like this terrible situation. She sends him photos of her apartment and it's like all torn up. I think we have those too, right? This is what Martin received from Diana and she's like, oh, this is my brother. We did some digging on our website, socialcatfish.com, and we were able to find out the true identity of this woman. Diana claimed this was her brother, but we found multiple images of them kissing all over the internet. It's like they are from either Turkey or Ukraine, but um, they're like living in Dubai or something. And then we have the images of the gifts. She would open them, of course, and then show him that she opened them some forces and those are legit like the same gifts he's yeah, exactly. yeah so these are legit yeah. the next thing we did was look into the address where martin was sending gifts to diana turns out the address doesn't exist but someone had to be receiving these packages whoever it was would open the gifts and send photos of what was inside back to martin the next time martin sent gifts to diana we packed it with our own gift we stuck a GPS tracker at the bottom of the tissue box so we could then see where the packages were going once they picked them up from the parking lot. Stick around until the end. Martin is still stuck on this woman, Diana, being truthful about her identity. If they were scammers from you, you know, Uganda or whatever, they'd have to be pretty damn uh, knowledgeable and um, you know, they'd have to be able to forge documents that are signed by the government in Ukraine, I mean, I don't think that's possible. So that's kind of why I've been, you know, believing and helping these, uh, uh, this woman, so. And our team will help him realize the truth about all of this. I was hoping that it would, uh, you know, come to uh, a relationship in person. So the real person that you're talking to is... If you've made it this far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. We appreciate you so much. It was now time to sit down with Martin to go over everything we had found. So you had sent over Diana's address. Um, you had been sending her packages to this address. And what we found was it led us to a shopping center. The one that's 51B was supposed to be your address. So the 51B is the one that led us to a shopping center. Okay, all right. We want to go through a few other things. So you had been wiring money to a bank called Private Bank. We did a lot of research on this bank and this bank was part of a massive fraud that was like $5.5 .5 billion in fraud found over the years. And so this is massive investigation. You know, looks like there was a cover up going on with this bank. It's not an overly trustworthy bank. Okay. Well, that was part of it. I used um, Weiss. I used, you know, private bank was the end of it. And then I would put money in a card on Remitly. 
I used, um, in the beginning, I used uh, MoneyGram, um, RIA, um, Remitly, and then, you know, I switched to Weiss, and then I went back to Remitly. So uh, I wasn't sending money to the private bank for c cash pickup all the time. At the end, the last uh, year or more, it's been uh, put on our cards, different cards. When you were sending money through MoneyGram, or what was the name on that? Her lawyer's secretary's name. I put money into their account. She owed the bank money, and they were going to take it if I sent it to her bank account. Yeah. So then she got a card, kind of probably kind of like one of those, uh, the kind of Visa cards you buy and put money on, I'm guessing. So the next thing we're going to look at is the receipt that you had sent over to us. Um, this was a receipt that Diana had sent to you. We used the image from the receipt and we found an exact match and it led us to an invoice template. And so what this means is anyone can have access to this type of template. They can fill it out, put any numbers that they want for whatever specific reason. Yeah, most companies, Martin, like they have invoicing software that they would use and print out. They wouldn't go and find like a template on the internet Photoshop like a picture in there and then send it to you that way. So, you know, all those things just seem convincing to me. Um, I may have been sending her money, but the, you know, the receipts you're showing me may have just been what I asked for, you know, to keep me going. First off, I was really impressed the fact that you had sent packages. They took pictures of the goods and the packages and sent them to you. I can understand how that can be convincing. One red flag that I saw though is that like there were all these selfies and videos that were sent to you. And so why weren't there any like selfies of them, you know, holding like in front of the packages or videos? I asked her about that and she did wear a choker supposedly that I had sent her, but I didn't ask, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't press her. I, I did ask for the, the picture of the purple jacket she wanted, you know, things like that. but. You know, when you're invested in a few months, you go on because you don't want to lose those months, you know, of time and investment. And you go on a year or two, you got more to lose if it would have worked out. So that's that was the dilemma I was in, I guess. Things just weren't adding up. Martin was slowly starting to realize the truth about this woman he had been planning a life with for four years. But it was time to give him the truth about this person in these photos. So we took all of the images that you had sent over to us for Diana and we were able to find a match. And what we were able to confirm is that Diana's real name is Alina and she lives in Russia. She's a social media content creator. Okay. Yeah, so the real person that you're talking to is not Diana. It's the real person in real life is Alina. And this person that you're talking to that has actually stolen their pictures and is using them to communicate with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I see some of the pictures that I recognize. So she's 21 years old and she's married. So the pictures that Diana was uh, in with her so-called brother, um, it's actually Alina's husband. Yeah. It doesn't quite look like the brother that I sent you. The picture you had, I think it was the, uh, like a side-by-side -side picture. So, and he actually looked a little younger in that picture. But yeah. Here, he looks slightly older. He doesn't look much older, yeah. but he looks slightly older. She's 21, so, I mean, they're both fairly young. I get it. I get it. Hmm. And so, Martin, why do you think that, like, you keep ending up in these situations? Why, why are they, why do you think that these women like continually talk to you? For money and for attention and, you know, just getting through difficult times. Um, fuck, whatever. The only thing that can get worse is to have my family see this because they already know. So your family doesn't know about this? My ex-wife has seen pictures and, you know, I'd, I'd borrowed money from her a couple times. Now I've had to move into the house that we own. 
because I spent all the money I had. Um, it's very emotional, you know, and it, it, it happens a lot of times communications while I'm working, which, uh, makes it difficult to concentrate. Um, so I don't want to talk about it. They may or may not see this, but I mean, our channel is extremely public and you know, a lot of people see the videos. I mean, if they see this video, do you have a message for them? I just, you know, when you're lonely and uh, you don't feel very good about yourself, you do things like this. So I guess the solution is to learn how to be lonely. Or feel good about yourself too. I mean, yeah, what, yeah. Like, Take yourself I mean, out on dates. I've done that sometimes, you know, but it it's hit and miss. And, you know, when you're on an emotional roller coaster with a relationship like this anyway, you don't want to talk to people about it because they think it's bullshit. You know, having someone like her want to be with someone like me is, uh, is not real. I don't think you're a bad looking dude. Like, I just think that, you know, there's somebody there that's probably closer to your age and, and like probably has yeah. similar interests that you do. Martin unfortunately fits the mold we've seen time and time again. Romance scammers are known to use beautiful women and sweet talk to lure unexpected victims. Loneliness is a vulnerability that leaves many men searching for love in the wrong places. I kind of knew this was going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm upset, but I'm also glad at the same time that I don't have to go on with this emotional roller coaster of being excited when she reaches out and being resentful when I send money. You know, being depressed, being excited again, being resentful, being depressed. It's just a roller coaster. Um, and I've, I've given up on dating sites because of, uh, of the outcome, but maybe now I'll try it again because this outcome didn't work. This is just a big waste of time and money. Um, and it's been frustrating. Uh, you know, to get texts from her while I'm driving around and while I'm trying to talk to people and, and yet I, I talk to her anyway. Um, so, you know, that'll be over. I won't have to do that anymore. Um, so that's a relief. But I'm worried about being humiliated also when this hits the air. And that's, you know, something I, I signed off on but uh, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause some real problems. You know, everybody takes this differently, right? And one thing that's like really important to understand is that like you're not the only one that's ever been through this, you know? There are hundreds of thousands of people every single year that come to us, and those are just the people that come to us. There are billions of dollars that are lost every single year. That's literally why we do this. We do 52 episodes a year. We could probably do 552 episodes a year if we had the time and resources. Mm -hmm. I'm not downplaying the fact that, you know, you sending money and being in this situation can be embarrassing. Like, I'm sure that it, it will be and it can be. But you are bringing awareness to this. And like the fact that now you know, moving forward, like how is this going to change your life? I need to get back to reality. That's mm -hmm. what matters. Um, I, I need to uh, <laughs> need to see a therapist again. Try to work through some shit, you know. Um, I've taken years off of building real relationships, even though they didn't work out over and over and over. Martin's loneliness was just another weakness this person behind this Diana profile exploited. He's disconnected from the real world like many other cases we've covered. He was sending me uh, gifts. <laughs> and there was a chocolate cake wrapped in plastic in the, in the center. He really kind of latched on to the fact that, uh, you know, David is uh, the beloved king. She still does, in fact, tells me she loves me and she does want to get together with me. Here's a, an attractive woman saying, you know, it makes no difference that I'm in a wheelchair and like they find me very attractive. Is it the real person or is it not? I seriously fell really deep for this person. We were talking about meeting each other and having a life together. You're handsome, you're 
uh, distinguished looking. Uh, I just figured she had daddy issues. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when you're lonely, you, you just believe it. You believe it. It's going to take 21 days to get results back on the GPS tracker we sent to Diana. Who do you think is behind this profile? And what do you think we should do when we're able to locate this person? Let us know in the comment section. We'll keep you guys updated through our community post as soon as we get any news. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember, all of our new videos go out every Wednesday. So please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, Seekers, we'll see you guys next time.